was always able to find a tasty morsel here and there to nibble on. What I'm trying to tell you is that Mr. Twit was a foul and smelly old man. He was also an extremely horrid old man, as you will find out in a moment. <laughs> that, that something against Are you ready for lunch in five minutes? <laughs> no, now it's very good writing, isn't it? This is what I was saying yesterday about images. We just see this, we can smell it, we can almost taste it. Very graphic, vivid, concrete writing. This is what makes him very famous. And the, the drawings are famous too. He worked for 30 years with this illustrator, Quentin Blake, who draws these great pictures and we even have tin sardines and cornflakes drawn for us as well. Um, very funny drawings. They, they work very nicely together. Um, yeah, so we've got this very descriptive kind of writing. Um, in this case, disgusting descriptive, but you find other places where it's sort of exciting descriptive or whatever. It's just uh, good stuff. <coughs> but again, the clarity of this, the speed, is pretty good. If you want to take it sentence by sentence and sort of listen to it, then you, know, you can. Let's just. Uh, as you can see, I've got a few more chapters and we might explore a few more of these next week. But let's just go back to the very first bit. This is read nice and smoothly. No doubt this guy practiced quite a lot before he recorded. You might notice he, he misses a few words. Yes. Did you notice those little errors? Yeah. He, he said, so what I want to know is, and he missed off of this, and there are a couple of other words he misses, the set not doesn't create a grammatical error. It's just yeah. It, so occasionally, I think there were three three examples of that. Like because but, of all this, he said because of this. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. So there are these little changes. So he's obviously practiced that, and he's sort of almost working from memory rather than what's on the page. But um, so how would you go at reading this in in this with this kind of fluency and this kind of smoothness? We've only got five minutes, I don't know. Ooh, every clock in this room is wrong. What's the atomic clock say? Three minutes, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Just try reading to each other a minute or two. Just take a line each and read to each other. How, how smoothly can you get this going? Yeah? What a lot of hairy-faced men there are around these days. Okay. Just, just four pairs. And a little three, go for it. What what that is, hey, you guys are trying to say, just so you get a bit more in the short. The love I want to know is how often do all these things hairy face men on their face? It is only one of the being passed out on Sunday night. And when they show food, do they use a good drive and they run hair to money? Yeah. <laughs> 
face men there are around nowadays. When a man grows hair all over his face, it is impossible to tell what he really looks like. Oh, would he tell you this? Huh? Yeah. Perhaps that's why he does it. He'd rather you didn't know. Then there's the problem of washing. Can you see how I'm exaggerating? If you do that, you'll get into a certain habit with just what this the whole idea of this is that it was you know if you do it a lot you build certain habits under in a controlled environment that then will flow over just kind of automatically into your speaking and you find you stress more clearly information was the real tonics remember the tonic you'll stress the tonic the word you really want to emphasize just naturally more if you do a lot of practice and I mean a lot again you practice the Mozart a lot you know 200 times, sure. Then you can get another Mozart and you'll learn it in a quarter of the time, won't you? Because of the skills you picked up in the first one. So, you know, you could take them in little bits and read them around, have another listen to him. You might think, oh, I'm not getting that word right. So listen to him or go to Cambridge Learner's Dictionary for the individual word. Like, what's a word that you might get a bit tricky? Not so many here. Or even mirror. Say mirror. You're not mirror or mirror. You know. Just go to the Cambridge, have a listen. Mirror. Okay, mirror. You know. So you can find individual words or the new words. Look, with, over the page. Mr. Twit. Bristles. You don't say the T. You don't say Bristol. So go to the Cambridge checker. Ah, oh, silent T. Bristle. Listen to it three times, four times. Copy it. Bristle, bristle. Then when you read it, bristle. Right. We've got these resources, haven't we? It's good to practice listening to the thing in a total text, but then you've got your other Cambridge where you can, you know, more microscopically look at individual words. So you've got terrifically, terrifically, terrific. There's the stress. So it will help you with stresses too. Where is the stress in the word? Is it terrifically or terrifically? Yeah. So checking stress. Listening here, if you can't get it, go to Cambridge and have a listen to exactly where the person is putting the stress. So my point is you've got a resource here, you've got two audio resources. You've got this as a continuous text, you've got your Cambridge learners to check individual words, you've got the 
transcript. There is a transcript on YouTube? Well, yeah, uh, no, not on YouTube. I have sent it to the our Facebook group. That's it there. About colon EPUB reader question mark ID equals two. Cut and paste that. So that's why I suggest you do join that group if you're not in it already. Yeah, because I'm putting up resources occasionally. But well, I still can't get into the YouTube. Can't get into YouTube? Yeah, you're Ah. Okay, remind me on Monday. I, I do need to demonstrate to everybody how to get into yes, the YouTube please. because if you miss a day or a few days, it's useful. Yeah, so let's do that. Let's do that Monday. Okay, what we've got here is a resource that, you know, I know you're busy with in the dark <laughs> over the weekend with your essay, so you might not be able to do it this weekend, but, you know, start next week, just a little bit a day or a little bit every second day, and do that many times. When you feel it's fluent, move on to your next section. It's in nice, short little sections, so you just keep working on it. And I think over time, you'll find when you pick up something more complex, that your fluency and smoothness of reading, just because you've come across many of those words before and you know how they sound and you've sounded them out yourself directly from text, you just slowly, over, over the months, you will approach a really nice kind of native-like level. And then you can move on to more complex pieces like stuff off the ABC, like a bit of transcription of science show with higher level words. Transcript, you've got the audio, you've got a model just the same way, but more, more sophisticated vocabulary, longer words, but I reckon starting with this stuff lays that foundation. And once you feel good about that, move on using the other resources. Yes, sir. What about yes, the fairy tales? You know the fairy tales? Like yeah, you, you can. Think in the same sure. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, true. Like they read yeah. the book. And That's right. You could, you could uh, do that too. Yeah. Like the fairy tales. Yeah. 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 Like the fairy tales. Yeah. 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 Yeah.